Hi, Elduendio5. You may have seen clips like these recently and wondered what the heck is going on. You may just want to learn how to cook the ultimate recipes for the strongest weapons. Either way, you've come to the right place. This guide will show you how to do all this and more using one of the variants of Prompt Entanglement, Star Tab and Valid Slot. Let's start by learning how to set this up. First, close your game to clear any current IST offset. Then perform the following steps. 1. Start a new game. Watch the initial cutscene. And get the initial autosave. Call this autosave 1. 2. Collect the Sheikah Slate. 3. Walk over to the armor chests. But wait! Don't open them yet. We have to wait 10 seconds so the game won't overwrite your first autosave. Or, collect an armor piece from a chest. And get an autosave. Call this autosave 2. 5. Check to make sure you have both autosaves. If not, restart from step 1. 6. Reload your progress save. 7. Generate one IST offset. See my Bow of Light video for detailed steps. In this case, I use Memory Overload to generate my offset. But you can use whichever method you prefer. Oh. Mm -hmm. huh. Eight. Reload auto save two twice. This will remove the last transfer key item. And then swap the order of the inventory so the armor ends up in the IST slot. 9. Reload autosave 1 to transfer the armor into that save. When you load in, you'll have an undiscovered armor tab with an item in it. You can use this to activate star tab in valid slot, as follows. 1. Loot the Sheikah Slate again. 2. Pause the game. 3. Hit L to move back to the inventory. 4. Hit D-pad left to switch to your undiscovered tab. If your cursor ends up on the star tab, great. Skip to step 7. If your cursor ended up in the bottom left, like mine, do the following. 5. Close and open your menu, and page right with the right stick. Do this twice. 6. You should now be able to move your D-pad left to the star tab. 7. Hit R to open the system tab, then hit D-pad left. If your cursor moves somewhere to the left of the system tab, your setup is good. Load your progress file, and let's see what we can do with this. First we need to learn how to activate a row. Row 4 is a bit special, but rows 1 through 3 are all the same, so let's learn those first. Select a target item. In this example, we'd like to do something with this unsellable armor. Now go either one screen to its right, or two to its left. If neither of these pages are convenient due to limited spaces, you can also go any multiple of three pages to the right or left. From here you can activate a row as follows. 1. Go to the row below your target, in column 5. 2. Quickly tap right stick left, d-pad up, right stick right, and d-pad left. Here's this once more. If done correctly, you should land on column 5 of the previous page. You have now successfully unlocked an invalid slot in column 5 of one of the first three rows. Row 4 is similar, but requires a bit more work. 1. Unlock row 3 as shown previously. 2. Use the d-pad to move over to column 5, row 4 of the current page. 3. Quickly tap d-pad right, left, left, right. 4. Use the d-pad to move back to the left to column 1 of the current page. 5. Quickly tap d-pad left, right, right, left. This is the mirror of step 3. 
Let's watch that full sequence once more in real time. It's okay to page quickly over an unlocked valid slot with the right stick. You can use this to peek at a page in order to see what's under your cursor if you forget. If you linger too long, however, the invalid slot will be reset and you'll have to unlock it again. Once you have column 5 of a row unlocked, you can use your right stick to page either right once or left twice, depending on how many pages you have on either side of your current location. This should place your invalid slot to the right of the current page. From here, you've already got column 5 unlocked, but if you wanted to unlock a different column, there are two sets of moves. For columns 2 through 4, do the following after activating a row. 1. Tap D-pad left until the column before your target. In this example, I want to target column 4. 2. At a relatively quick tempo, tap right stick right, D-pad right, right stick left, D-pad right. Let's see that for the other two columns in real time. For column 1, do the following. 1. Tap D-pad left to get to column 5. 2. Quickly tap D-pad right, left, left, right. Let's see that again in real time. Note that although it's possible to unlock a column to the left of one you've already unlocked using this method, if you try to unlock one to its right, you'll get stuck on the earliest one you've already unlocked. Now that you can create an invalid slot on an arbitrary target item, you need to entangle a prompt from another page. Move in groups of three, either right or left, to a page with items you want to entangle the prompt from. In this example, I'd like to eat my Zora armor, so I'll head over to food. Once you're hovering over an item whose prompt you'd like to entangle, simply hit R to go to the System tab, pause briefly, and L to go back to the inventory. You should see the text in the lower right corner update to list the item whose prompt you're entangling. Now page in groups of three with the right stick until your invalid slot is once again over your target item. You can now hit A to bring up the prompt from the entangled item. For entangled food, the recipe prompt doesn't do anything useful, but eat or drink is quite handy. If you use this on a target item, it'll reduce its durability by 1, removing the item entirely if it drops to 0 or lower. Note that armor uses a life value to track its dye color, so eating dyed armor will change the color first before deleting the item. You can use this to remove anything, including arrow stacks, unsellable armor, and key items. If you've duped stuff accidentally playing with IST, this can fix it. Getting rid of duped spirit orbs or Korok seeds using this method can take a while, but it can be done. Same with weaponry, since they have 100 times the expected durability. The eat, drink, or use prompt function is essentially the same on edible materials as it does for food. So even if you don't have a food item handy for this purpose, you can try entangling certain materials instead. Before moving on, I'd like to take a moment to thank all the people over in my Discord server who've been working hard to research and develop these techniques. They're really pushing the envelope of what's possible. I'll leave an invite in the description if you want to join and contribute to some of this cutting-edge research. I've also left links to some text guides written by these community members, if you prefer that sort of thing. I also want to thank my subscribers for continuing to support me. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and enabling notifications for more content like this. And now back to the guide. Next, we'll look at entangling equipment, which includes weapons, bows and arrows, shields, and armor. The useful options are equip or remove, and drop. Not all equipment supports all prompts. Arrows and armor don't have a drop option. Prompts can also be disabled in some instances. You can't normally drop the Master Sword or Bow of Light, remove or drop the One-Hit Obliterator, or remove equipped arrows. Keep that in mind if you're entangling from one of these. The Equip or Remove option depends on the equip status of the entangled item, and will only do something useful to the target item if it is also normally equipable and in the same state as the entangled item. For example, if you remove an already unequipped target item, nothing will happen to it. 
You can do strange things like equip a material, key item, or even an empty item box, but the blue box will simply disappear if you scroll it off screen. When entangling the equip prompt, the originally entangled item will be equipped in game, but not in menu. Conversely, the target item will be equipped in menu, but not in game. This is a way to get inventory desync without using memory overload. You can use this to dupe your equipment. It works even better on melee weapons, because you can throw them. If you entangle an equip prompt from a weapon bow or shield, and already have another item of the same category equipped, it will receive the durability of the entangled item. If you entangle an equip prompt onto a weapon bow or shield, and you already have another item of the same category equipped, it will transfer its durability onto the target entangled item. This allows you to quickly conduct field repairs. Durability transfer will only happen if when you exit the menu you see the model on Link's back change. This won't occur if you are entangling onto a weapon bow or shield and hadn't changed that type of equipment since entering the menu. Let's equip something and try that same set of moves. See? It worked this time. After completing durability transfer, or anything else that leaves your weapons, bows, or shields desynced, it's generally a good idea to resync your equip status. Otherwise, if you drop a desynced weapon equipped in menu, it'll be replaced by the one equipped in game. You can also do this deliberately if you'd like another copy of something. Although many of the previous tricks can be done with memory overload, one thing you can only do with prompt entanglement is to unequip all weapons in the menu, but leave one equipped in game, such that you can use it without losing durability. The phantom weapon will eventually break. When that happens, you can just do the same trick again for another copy. Remove works similarly to equip, but in reverse. When entangling the remove prompt, the originally entangled item will be unequipped in game, but not in menu. Conversely, the target item will be unequipped in menu, but not in game. No durability transfer occurs with the remove prompt, but it can cause desync and lead to all the same weapon duping shenanigans as a result. One useful thing you can do with remove, but not equip, is to unequip your arrows in order to access zero BLSS. The drop prompt has different effects depending on your target item. If used on armor, it will appear to remove it, but the armor will return with its die reset if you scroll off screen and back. If you use it on arrows, somehow, it'll reduce their count without removing the stack if you hit zero. Using it on other equipment can allow you to drop normally undroppable weapons. These last two won't generally be possible without duped arrow slots, though I'll show you another way later. If used on materials, stackable food, or certain key items, however, it allows you to hold things without entering the hold state. This is how you can cook recipes with already cooked ingredients. For example, let's say I wanted to cook Ultimate Recipe 1. I just need a frozen hearty salmon, a roasted Endura carrot, and a raw Endura carrot. Let's see how this is done. First entangle a prompt from some equipment. Then use it to drop the first ingredient. You'll notice the item appear in front of Link's chest. Next, unlock the next slot and use it to entangle a prompt from another piece of equipment. Use this to drop hold the next ingredient. One useful property of this form of holding is that you can use it even when your ingredient stack gets to time zero, and Link will just dupe another copy of the item. You can even keep the dupes if you press B to put them away. Once you've held all the cooked ingredients for the meal, you can simply scroll over to the last raw ingredient regularly and hold it as usual. Cook the items in the pot, and you've got your ultimate meal. <laughs> Here's the recipe again. Using the drop prompt in this way also allows you to exceed the normal limit of five held objects. If you do this though, any extra items will simply be deleted from existence. This won't delete the stack of items if it gets down to time zero, unless you actually drop them and they're included in the first five items. Even if you press B to put them away, 
it'll leave the time zero stack in your inventory. One last thing to be careful of here. If you attempt to hold an item without a 3D model, the game will crash instantly. It is technically possible to hold items without 3D models, but it involves other techniques, so I'll cover that separately. For now, be careful not to try this with regular non-stackable meals, champion abilities, spirit orbs, or many other key items. The slate and glider both work, as do all horse gear. There are also some miscellaneous key items such as Hestu's maracas, the thunder helm, or the picture of the champions which work. Korok seeds also work for some strange reason, although they have a very weird model in game. Now you can cook poo soup too. <laughs> Next, we'll look at entangling materials. As mentioned previously, the eat, drink, or use prompts act just like food, but materials also have a hold option. The hold prompt is useful for dropping normally undroppable items, such as the Master Sword or Bow of Light. Before dropping the Master Sword, make sure to have it unequipped before entering the menu, or the Return to Forest animation will play and you'll lose it. When dropping the Bow of Light, make sure it's unequipped, or it'll be instantly added back to your inventory. You also have to drop it facing away from a high enough ledge, so you can exit its pickup radius before it lands and tractors toward Link. This also allows you to drop the one-hit obliterator. You can then equip something else before picking it up to avoid re-equipping it. As with drop holding, Using this on armor will reset its die directly to base. Using the hold prompt itself isn't that useful for stackable items. It will allow you to hold one item of an invalid type, but then you'll be locked into that type of item and can't even hold more from the same stack. Pressing X to hold, however, has different characteristics. In this mode, you can hold up to five of the target item regardless of its actual count, assuming you're not already holding something. You can then either pocket the duped items or use them for cooking. Arrows work even better, allowing you to hold as many as you want, although the game might crash if you hold too many, so I'd stick to groups of 50 or fewer at a time. Once you get down to the time zero stack, you can hit X to cancel the hold, and the arrows will stay deleted. If you're entangling an edible material, you can then hit A and eat, drink, or use the empty slot to fully get rid of the arrows. If not, you can entangle some food to use its eat prompt instead. If you're having trouble targeting something directly, Targeting an empty slot will interact with the first item on that page. See? No more ice arrows. Using this once on a weapon, bow, or shield will drop it in-game. If the equipment wasn't equipped in menu before pausing, you can drop additional copies with each A-press. For some reason, these copies all have zero durability, however, so when you exit the menu, you'll be treated to a loud explosion. You might want to lower your volume for a second. Just be aware that dropping 11 or more copies will also erase the original one. As with the drop prompt on equipment, be careful not to do this with items that don't have 3D models, or the game will crash. By combining different entangled prompt effects, you can achieve unique goals. For example, it is possible to generate IST offset entirely through prompt entanglement. You can do so by following these steps. One. Unlock an invalid slot on an edible material, preferably in column 1, row 1 of a page. The material must have only one left. Activate it with R plus L. 2. Eat the last material. 3. Page in groups of 3 over to a weapon, bow, or shield tab. 4. Activate the prompt for that page with R plus L. 5. Page in groups of 3 back to the target material. 6. Press A and drop hold another copy of that material. 7. Exit the menu and drop the material on the ground. You should now have one more IST offset slot than before. This isn't particularly efficient, but if you only need one more slot and can't stand arrowless, it's a viable option. This guide is not comprehensive. 
there are at least three or four other distinct methods for achieving invalid slot prompt entanglement. Even within the sphere of star tab invalid slot, there are other moves I didn't cover. It's also possible to activate multiple slots at the same time, allowing you to simply move between them to activate cells rather than using R plus L. With enough effort, you can actually activate at least 19 slots at once out of 20. If you're interested in some of these other methods, you can learn more about them over on my Discord, or by reading the guides linked below in the description. As always, I hope you find this information useful, and thank you for watching. Ooh.